Hi there. This is uh, Brain Power, episode number seven. Our intention is to show you some principles of how you can improve your brain power. Our title for today is Good Cop, Bad Cop. Now, we've looked at shaping your thoughts in the previous session, and we really zoned in on the EFAs, the essential fatty acids, and we want to expand on that in uh, the session today. Let's, um, let's look at essential fatty acids. We want to remind you that non-essential fatty acids is those that the body can manufacture itself. But there's some that we really need. It's essential that we have them through diet. And uh, that's called the essential fatty acids. We also reminded you, we want to remind you of the, uh, the cascades, the changes that it takes place uh, in our cells by the use of omega-3s, omega-6, and omega-9s. If I take you to omega-3s, it changes to EPAs, and that EPA is changed to DHA and EPA, and that, at the end of the day, changed to PGE3 that causes uh, anti-inflammatory action within the cell. Very important to know that our bodies can actually manufacture DHA from vitamins and, and minerals with the linolenic acid that's in our system. And uh, we therefore don't need to use any other products than plant-based products for our diet and especially for the essential fatty acids. We also want to remind you of the high inflammatory disease risk that we run when we would have too much omega-6s in our diet. Omegas, in the right balances, really improves intelligence. And this is really why we are sharing with you, because this is how to improve your brain power. It would also uh, give you better cognitive performance. I'm going to really perform much better from a, from, a, from a mental point of view if I have these omegas in the right balances through my diet. Now, um, there's some facts that you should be aware of. Uh, the brain's gray matter is made up of the neurons which gather and transmit signals throughout our brain. So we've got the, the, the gray matter uh, per se, and then we've got the white matter, and that is the dendrites and the little axons which create the network by which the, 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 the neurons send uh, their signals. So, you know, when we talk about white patches, it means those patches of, of neurons that are in line and um, they are connected in such a way to actually perform certain tasks. Your brain is 60% white matter and about 40% gray matter. And uh, that's the, the sort of balance that we find uh, during our, in, in our brain. Now, just to explain this title once again, the good cop, bad cop situation. We need omega 3s, 6s, and 9s. It sometimes seems, and it might have seemed if you looked at the previous episode, that uh, you know, omega 6s are, are a culprit in, in not you know, allowing us to really perform as we should. However, we need to know that it is a cop as well. It is important. We need just the balance. So the one would overshadow the other one a little bit, um, because of the dictates of our lifestyle and in our, especially in our Western society. I want to take you to a beautiful verse found in Jeremiah 29 verse 11. It says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans of welfare and not of evil, to give you a future and to give you a hope. I love the way that the Lord really protects us with Scripture. Even, you know, in, 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 in physical things, not only spiritual, not only mental and social things, but, but, yeah, even physical. The Lord says, I know the plans I have for you. I want you to fly like an eagle. I don't want you to scratch like a chicken. I want you really to excel through life. I've got plans for welfare for you 
and not for evil. I want you to do good. I want you to be on top. I want you to have a good future. I want you to have hope. And really, when we look at something as practical as this session on, on essential fatty acids, we, we can see God's intention of even giving us hope. Because, you know, even when a person is depressed and down and gloomy, many times it's because they've got two little omega-3s in their diet. The moment you pick that up, life becomes something else. There is hope. There is hope even in disease. God is still the healer. He can do something great for you. Now, the question is, in my way of eating and my way of doing things, am I getting enough omegas so that this balances could be there as we want it? Well, let's go back to the list that we shared with the previous episode. We shared with you the omega-3s, the omega-6s, and the omega-9s. And we said that omega-3s, we get that in linseed, canola, soya, fish, fish oil, dried beans, wheat germs, seaweed, seaweed, pumpkin seeds, walnuts, almonds, avocados, bananas, spinach, dark greeny leafy um, vegetables, also sweet potatoes, turnips, and cucumber. Remember, we need to have these with the skin on. That would give us the real in the right combination. We also find omega-6s in sunflower, sesame, and the soya, corn mealies, dried beans, peanuts, linseed, pumpkin seeds. And we also find it in avocado, olives, almonds, pumpkin, sesame, canola, macadamia nuts. I love these things. They are really so scrumptious. They really do so well for us. Now, you could examine if you have a shortage of these omegas. And um, there's some self-examination that I need to quickly share with you. The, the first one you could look at is a rash-like little bumps on the back of your arms. And I've seen this many times, especially with ladies. Right at the back of the arm, there would be little bumps, like little um, pimples on the back. It's sometimes just a fact that we, in the way that we eat from the shelves and you know, we've got hasty lives that we don't have all of these ingredients that we need. And it would cause these sort of symptoms. Now, this is a physical one that would show you, hey, there's a problem. I, I, I might need to look at this. Another one is dull hair. Your, your hair, you know, is dull. And, you know, people use strange things to try and get it to shine again. I've, I've met up with a lady that said, no, the one thing I use that really works for me, I wash my hair in my husband's beer. I tell you, it's so much easier to just use a little bit more Amigas in my diet. And we'll see that the hair will just start, you know, shining and be, and be beautiful. Dry, scaly hair, rough skin, that is because of too little omegas in the diet. Brittle nails. Nails just, you know, breaking for nothing. Or even they've got these little white specks on it. That's the signs that you have too little omegas in, in, your, in your diet. Another one that you could look at is dry mucous membranes. You'll find that your tear ducts are, are dry. So, you know, you need to go to the pharmacy and they'll give you some drops to put in your, uh, your eyes. They call it artificial eye drops or artificial teardrops. And uh, that would give you better vision. But uh, the real problem is just changing your diet a little bit, giving you more of these good amigas. Uh, you might find a dry mouth or dry skin. And in the case of ladies, a dry vagina. This really could change by just changing your diet a little bit. Frequent infections. I've seen this so many times where a person would have one flu and one cold and go into the next one. And before that even recovered, they go into the next one. And the moment we start changing the diet and making sure that there's more omegas into, into the diet, we see that those frequent infections, just they just go away. Remember the inflammatory action when there's too high amounts of omega-6s in the diet. Here's a very interesting one. We also found that people that have a good, balanced uh, omega diet, 
they would not have um, such a sunburn problem. Now, I'm one of those. I've got a very fair skin, so I need to be very careful in the sun. But I found as I changed my diet, and that's many years already, 15 years to be exact, I found I am more tolerant to, to sunlight than I've been in the past. I would burn very, very sore in the past. But since my fats have changed, my omegas have changed in my diet, I'm really much more tolerant to, to the sun. It does not mean that I could just um, you know, do what I like in the sun, but I don't have the very, very sore burning that, that I've had in the past. This is a major breakthrough for me that love the outdoors and, and love, you know, water and water skiing and, and these sort of activities, um, hiking and walking trails. I, I really love these things. And many a times the sun has been, you know, one of those things that say, no, no, I don't know if I'm going to go. It's just too hard. I could really go and do it nowadays. Now, there's some more self-examination, and um, this is more advanced, and uh, we could look at this. Poor memory and learning difficulties is a sure sign that my omegas aren't balanced. So there's a lot of things that would indicate that I could really do much better from a mental point of view if I would make some changes. Excessive sweating. Some people will just, you know, sweat for nothing. Water retention. Find this especially with older people where they start keeping back water. In the moment we make sure those omegas are balanced, that uh, sorts out the problem, and they don't have to use all the, the you know the, uh, the the medication to try and get the water down. Another one is inflammatory uh, inflammatory health problems, things like high blood fats, things like depression, uh, PMS breast pains all of these issues can be relieved in a major way if i would get enough omegas during my diet now omegas is really the solution to many of these inflammatory diseases that we find today it is the prevention of of many of these problems it would really cause me to um, and the outcomes would be amazing when it comes to, to academic affairs. I give a little secret to our students, and uh, I'm about to, to start sharing that with you. If you want your child to really excel, and as we said, really fly like an eagle, rather than scratch like a chicken, start introducing omegas into the better lifestyle that you prepare for, for your kid. If you are... You know, working with your head, um, if, and, and I, th I believe all of us do that, you could do yourself the biggest favor if you can just start introducing the, the, the recipe that I'm sharing with you now. You'll see a big, big difference in a very short time. What you need to get yourself is some linseed or uh, flaxseed. Some people know it as flaxseed. And um, on the screen here, yeah, you can see some pictures of, of uh, linseed. I've got a package here of linseed, and um, this, is, uh, this is linseed, a little black, little seed, brown little seed, small seed. You could uh, even find it in a, in a, in a, in a more yellow, whitish sort of uh, seed. And um, you need linseed. You also need sunflower seed. Now, I've got an example of sunflower seed here. That is sunflower seed. We all know some sunflower seed somehow. And... Um, very high in omega-6s, and this is why uh, we've got a big problem in our Western society because all the oils that we use is really derived from, from uh, sunflowers. And then we need sesame seed. Sesame seed is this little small whitish little seed, and uh, very, very important that we have the balance of these four seeds. And then the last one, not the least, is the pumpkin seed. Uh, we need pumpkin seed in this recipe that we are sharing with you today. This is really going to change your whole life. Now, what you do is you take this, uh, the seeds and you, you might use, you know, linseed exclusively. It's the highest in omega-3s in all the plant products. But you need a balance. It, it really gives you, the variety gives you a better um, 
nutritional perspective at the end of the day. So we, we, we really would encourage you to use all four of these, of these seeds. Now, what we would do is, and if you would follow me, uh, we would take some of this um, seed. Now, this is a packet of linseed, sunflower, sesame, and pumpkin seed in the right combination mixed. And uh, I'm going to give you that recipe right now. But we would take this mixed seed, the right ratio, and we would pour it into our little coffee grinder. This is now a small little um, electrical coffee grinder. And uh, we'll put the lid on to make sure it will start. And this mix is an amazing mix that you won't believe the results. So I want to, I want to just take you through this quickly. We're going to use one cup of linseed. So when you do the mix, you take one cup of linseed and you'll take one third a cup of sunflower, of sesame, and of pumpkin seed. And uh, you could put that in a container if you don't. Um, grind it before it could actually last quite a while you don't have to worry that it would go down but the moment I've grounded it into a into a it's not a powder but it's just finer if I if I've grinded it up like I did right here this I need to keep in a safe place what I mean by safe is you need to store it in a in an oxygen-free container, so a container that would seal good, and then put it in the fridge. Please do yourself a favor, don't use this after seven days of grinding it. Just make enough that you don't need to go after seven days. This, if it's kept in the fridge, and it is in a, in a sealed container, it would not oxidate as quickly, and uh, you could use it during the week, but after seven days, rather, rather throw it away and start anew because it oxidizes too much and really leaves us with a lot of challenges. If you would pour this mixture of two to four tablespoons on your porridge in the morning, you would do yourself a great favor. You could even put um, it on a slice of bread spread maybe with a little bit of honey and spread this on top it really has got a nutty taste to it and uh, this is really the secret for 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 brain power i've seen so many times i've witnessed so many times where students that used to scratch they started flying by introducing the principles we've shared in the episodes before adding to it really one of the cherries on the cake is this recipe that we would share with you. Get your seeds and add that to your, to your uh, breakfast. Add that to your uh, lunch. Add that to your supper. And uh, you would excel more than you could think. What you need is two to four tablespoons per day. And uh, you could even have a little bit more during exam time or when there's really mental power needed. Now, I want to give you some more benefits of seeds because, you know, it seems like oh, it's just seeds. They are really, really, really good. It's not going to make you whistle like a bird. Uh, it's really going to have a lot of other very good benefits. Well, it contains gel roughage. And we need gel roughage in our digestive system. Really good to, to clean up the system. Um, it's great for cleaning the pockets in the bowel. In our bowel, we've got little... Um, what we call the, the verticuli, it's little pockets there. And many a times, you know, it gets packed up uh, by, you know, the content. And uh, it really gets scratched out. You could even use linseed in the whole form to really help us uh, tend or, or act as little brooms that clean out the, the inside. It would prevent and it would cure chronic constipation. We've seen where we've given this to all the people that normally start struggling with constipation. And we would just lift their fiber content on their, on their uh, diet and we would add this. It would not only give them all the meagers they need, but it would also 
it also has an anti-inflammatory action right inside of the intestines and it would prevent constipation. Some more notes on seeds. It will not aggravate your diverticulitis, your little pockets, your bowel wall pockets. It won't aggravate that. Some people say, no, no, I cannot use seeds like that. You could, you could believe this. It's not going to have a problem there. If the seeds come out whole on the other end, you know, if you go to that little place where you're normally alone and the seals seeds come out whole on the other end, it means that your tummy don't have enough um, hydrochloric acid in there to really break open the seeds and, and get the good benefit out of it. And this is why we have encouraged you to really grind it up a little bit so that we expose it and your system can really take it up. You could actually better this whole condition where you don't, you know, have enough of the right acid to, to, to digest the, the, the things like the seeds. By using betaine hydrochloride, one capsule with each meal. And if you can just do this, every meal, one capsule for one month, you would see a big, big change. What we have found is, that if you would have a good balanced diet, remember all your omegas there, even people with arthritis would have not such a lot of symptoms and pains because of the inflammation that would come down and the digestion that would take better, that would, that would be better, and the acid levels in the body that would come down because of the introduction of, for instance, betaine uh, hydrochloride. Please, it's not, uh, we, we shouldn't get confused with the fact that we put in hydrochloride acid, beta and borochloride acid in our system, that we would get more acid. Our system would actually become more alkaline. The acid levels in the tummy would be ideal for the digestion of these little seeds. We need to eat, stop eating between meals. That's a big problem. Um, you know, we, we're going to have all of these digestion problems if we, we keep on eating in between meals. We should try and stick to maximum of three meals per day. Another very important thing is not drinking fluids with your meals. You see, you need to masticate your food well. You need to chew it. And the saliva and these digestive enzymes would mix well with the food it would then, in the digestion, even especially of carbohydrates, would start you in the mouth. It would go down, and there's some more digestion that would take place in the tummy, and then more in the small intestine, and then lastly in our colon area. Very, very important that we don't drink with our meals because it dilutes these digest digestive juices. Leave the drinking for about one and a half hours after you had your meal. And you would see a big difference. The reason why I express this, the reason why I emphasize this so much, is because it does affect your brain capacity. It's not just about how I'm going to feel. It's really how you're going to operate, how you're going to look at things. Well, there's some more general fat issues that I need to share with you. You see, saturated fats make the, the cell walls rigid. This is why we see in media, why we see all over the place, to keep down on saturated fats. And they're normally found in animal products. This makes the cell walls, if they are rigid, it makes the cell walls communication and absorption of nutrition very, very challenging. The moment I change to a more plant-based diet where I would have less saturated fats, absorption of nutritional values are much better. Communication between the cells does happen much, much better. And then I need to just um, encourage our mommies that are feeding their babies. Very important that you remember that the mental edge of your little one is really put there and it lasts for a lifetime when you would breastfeed your, your child. Now, why? Yeah, it's because, you know, it's, it, there's a high amount of the right amount of fats that go in, in forming this little kid and actually forming this little kid's brain. We see a big difference between a child that was raised on mother's milk 
and one that was raised on formula. Researchers have found that it's, vi uh, it's virtually impossible to duplicate mother's milk with the formulas that, that we find today. Now, you see, this leaves us at the end of this episode with, with some choices. You've got a choice. You see, the benefits of using seeds will leave you with a sharp mind or not using it with a dull brain. And you could make the decision around that. The choice is yours. Choose. Do you want a sharp mind or do you want a dull brain? You make the difference. You see, about choices. You need to take responsibility for your own health. We cannot expect somebody else to make decisions for us on our health. You need to choose to live, not just to enjoy a few short moments. And this is sometimes how we live. You know, just for a short few moments of, of joy and appetite. Rather, for happiness and for health long term. Live long term. Think long term. Now, a verse that I need to share with you that really does make a big difference once again is Third John 1 verse 2 that says, Beloved, in regard to all things, I pray that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospereth. We've shared this verse with you. I believe God wants your health to be tip-top as he wants our soul to be tip-top. May God bless you as you make good decisions, not only spiritually, but physically and mentally, holistically looking at how you can really exalt our Creator more and more. Be blessed until we see at the next episode. God bless.